all the baits dimpling. I pulled right up to this flat and bait was everywhere. So we've got it chummed up and I'm gonna throw the net and uh, shouldn't take us long. And cake. All right, folks, as most of you know that there's there's actually two different types of uh, what we would call a sardine or, or a, a white bait or something like that. There's two kinds. There's one that there's a scaled sardine, white bait, cricket, um, you name it. There's all kinds of worms. Um, they call them different things uh, in the in the, throughout florida so we call them white bait or greenbacks some people call thread fins greenbacks but i call them threadies and then i call uh white bait or scaled sardines scaled sardines and you can see a difference between the two of them one has a bigger eye thicker body heftier scales that's the white bait slash greenback that lives longer than the thread fin the thread fin doesn't live very long in the live well simply because their scales get knocked off very easily and they're just not as hardy and as you can see the difference between the two one has a very big eye and you can see that it has a thicker body compared to the thread fin now the thread fin herring which is just a miniature these are both in the in the tarpon family actually the tarpon are in their family there's a giant thread fin herring actually but anyway the difference between the two as you can see is one has a bigger eye one has a smaller eye and then you can see the thread coming off the back well folks as you know there's been a lot of changes lately with the fwc changing laws they're changing uh, october 15th lane snapper and flounder closed down october 12th snook redfish and trout opened back up now they're talking about opening up goliath grouper between 26 and 34 inches you can get one tag and it's 500 dollars. and i think the the i think the the season runs march through may i'm not sure how i feel about that simply because the 20 24 to 36 inch fish is a small goliath and I feel that if you're going to if you're going to target that species or if you're going to try to thin it out just a little bit because they need to be thinned out they're thick you go to our, any reef or anything like that there's there's fish down there i can't tell you how many times i've dropped the camera and and saw a goliath grouper there and this is inshore that's not even offshore offshore it's even worse so i think there does need to be an open season uh do i think the size limit should be bigger yes uh i think if we get some get rid of some of those bigger ones also that's going to help some things and with that fish i mean you could sell it commercially if the, with the commercial guys you could sell it or you could donate it you could do a lot of things with the meat there's a lot of meat that comes off those goliath groupers I would imagine i've never cleaned one but i'm just imagining that just a regular size grouper you get a fillet that's this thick and this long on a 24 inch grouper so with that being said right now it just seems almost nearly impossible to keep up with everything that's going on and it's it's kind of frustrating because you know some of these fish i think that they're closing down red grouper is closed down uh, they closed down those I think it was September 15th the amount of red grouper that we catch inside the bay do we catch a lot of keepers no but we catch a lot of juvenile fish a lot of juvenile fish I could literally I'm sitting in a spot right now to where I can move over about 75 yards 
and that's all I would catch is red grouper. Um, I know that there's a science behind it, and I know that there's people like Dylan Hubbard that understand it a lot better than I do, and and he's really involved with that out of Hubbard's Marine, and we appreciate the input that he has and what he's doing. And so there is a science to it, but again, I just think that they're picking and choosing it seems like sometimes, and it's very frustrating frustrating to fishermen because me personally, I don't need to keep fish. I mean, every once in a great while, I'll keep something to do, catch, cook, and clean, or catch, clean, and cook. But other than that, I'm not big into keeping fish. Now, Chad loves to keep fish, but, but he gives it to a lot of family and friends and things like that. So it's not like it's going to waste. It's not going to waste. But anyway, I just wanted to share my thoughts on it. It's kind of, it's, it's frustrating. It's frustrating. It just seems like there's more and more that's being closed than it is being open. I'm kind of shocked that they opened redfish, snook, and trout uh, because of the red tide. But I do think that their numbers are pretty good. Uh, uh, the the people that are saying I rather see it closed, well then don't keep any. Just you know don't don't keep any when you fish for them and uh you know it's it's just one of those things to where we all have to we all have to, have to be stewards of the sea and just do what we need to do to make sure that we're not over keeping our limits and things like that and keeping illegal fish and so uh with that being said right now i'm out fishing the tide's ripping pretty hard so i don't think i'm going to do much right now but let's go ahead and get into the Friday fishing forecast. Talk about this weekend. Looks like this weekend's going to be really good. Low winds. There's a little bit of chance of rain on Saturday. But I like those kind of days. I like it when it's overcast and rainy because the fish seem to really go off. So let's go ahead and get into the Friday fishing forecast. Talk about what we have coming up. And then we'll also let you know of some things that we've got going on. Uh, especially towards the end of this month. We've got a seminar coming up and we'll let you guys know about that. Well, let's go ahead and talk about the tides and slooners for this weekend. I can tell you right now that the uh, outgoing tide in the morning is ripping. So uh, if you're going to do inshore fishing like snook reds and trout, I highly recommend fishing that, that uh, outgoing tide in the morning because it is ripping out here and I, I, haven't even, I haven't gotten bit. So let's go ahead and get into the tides and slooners. Okay, on Saturday we have a low tide at 10:12 a.m. at a 0.05 foot, and we have a high tide at 5:03 p.m. at a 1.96 foot. Then we have a low tide at 9:02 p.m. at a 1.6 foot. Then on Sunday we have a high tide at 11:12 a.m. at a 0. Point, or I'm sorry, a low tide at 11:12 a.m. at a 0. 0.07 foot. Then we have a high tide at 6:25 p.m. at a 1.78 foot. And then we have a low tide at 8.48 p.m. at a 1.71 foot. Okay, for the slooners for this weekend, we have a minor feeding time from 10.20 a.m. to 11.20 a.m. And then we have a major feeding time from 3.19 p.m. to 5.19 p.m. And then on Sunday, we have a minor feeding time from 11.29 a.m. to 12.29 p.m. Then we have a major feeding time from 4.19 p.m. to 6.19 p.m. So as you can see this weekend, the, the tides, like I said in the morning, are going to be pretty strong to fish for grouper and snapper. So I would recommend hitting that tide change or fishing late in the afternoon for those fish. Now for snook, redfish, and trout, that outgoing tide, I personally love those hard outgoing tides to fish the flats and things like that. When I was catching bait, there was snook busting, trout busting. So there's a lot of fish, a lot of activity. That water temperature still holding in the, I think in the mid, uh, it's 83, 83 degrees. So the water temperature still up there a little bit, but I think in a couple weeks we're supposed to get some cool, cool weather. So it should drop it a little bit. And I think as soon as it starts dropping that water temperature, these fish are going to go off pretty good. But there's all kinds of activity even out in the channel. I don't know why my GoPro keeps turning off on me. But anyway, there's a lot of activity out in the out in the channel. There's Spanish mackerel, there's jacks, there's ladyfish. I can see all this stuff just busting the surface. So there's a lot of activity. There's a lot of bait. Bait is easy to get on the flats right now. So I think this weekend could be pretty good. 
Saturday morning, they're they're calling for a slight chance of rain, which is okay. There's nothing major. So I think if you're willing to stand out in the rain, you, you, you're going to get into some fish. I love fishing when it's overcast like that because I've had some of the best days I've ever had with, with weather like that. Finally got a fish. Tide finally started slowing down. Grunt. But where there's grunt, there's grouper and snapper. Really good to eat. Just a pain in the butt to clean. Before you know it, that'll be the only thing we'll be able to keep. <laughs> As you see on the screen, that's an indication of really hard bottom. There's a ledge and then there's some really hard bottom uh, along that ledge it, it kind of it's a, about a foot and a half two foot ledge and then it's hard bottom on top of the ledge and then it drops down again so uh, I'm fishing right on top of it and the tide has slowed down tremendously but I'm still not really getting the bites that I want I caught that that grunt but trying all kinds of different things it's it's a lot more difficult when you're by yourself because one person if you had two or three people you could try different things until fun somebody found out what these fish wanted like right now i've got cut bait on and i'm just testing it out to see if it's even going to work i caught that one grunt and i thought okay maybe maybe we can get them going on cut bait but nothing They are not being very aggressive. See what's happening right now, I've talked about this before in the past, but I haven't talked about it in a while because we really haven't fished out here too much lately. But what's happening is this tide on top of the water is actually still going out. But what's happening is about mid-level down, it's actually starting to come in. So if you're gonna chum, this is one of the best times to chum. Even though it looks like your bait is going that way, your chum is going that way, it's actually turning around halfway down and coming coming back towards you and by the time it hits the bottom it's actually right below the boat so when you're fishing in the deep water like the shipping channel and i'm in 45 feet of water 43 43 feet of water so what i'll do is i'll i'll get it to when it's it's doing that but once it stops that means that tide's really running underneath so by the time it, it's going down it shoots off this way so it looks like it's going straight down but then it catches the tide down below and starts to take off this way so it's a really fine time of when you want to when you want to chum out in the main channel so i'll throw the chummers out and then you'll see the chummers going away from the boat but when they get about 15 feet down, what they'll do is, and unfortunately the water's not clear enough, but what they'll do is they'll actually stop in the water column and they'll turn around, that chum will turn around and start coming towards the boat. Like right now, it's starting to stop. I can barely see it. This water's really, really dirty. And it's gonna start coming back towards me. And a lot of times what will happen is once it gets back behind us, it will uh, are underneath us it will start to show up on the on the screen and those fish will start to come up off the bottom and uh we'll get them chummed up that way there's some fish coming off the bottom right there so chumming is key you just got to make sure that you do it at the right time and after doing it a few times you'll you'll figure out when is a good time when's not a good time now let me show you this. This is why they won't eat this bait again. I know it's the craziest thing. It happens more often than not. That little mark right on his gill, they won't eat him. Not all the time, but most of the time, if there's a mark on that fish, those fish will not, it's the weirdest thing and I don't know why they do it, but they will not come back and eat this. Now if they're frenzied up and they're really eating good, then it it they don't care. But most of the time, if that fish is marked, We've had it to where a scale or two are off, they won't eat it. Strangest thing, I don't know if it's how the bait reacts or what, but it just, at that point, I just throw the bait away. Put on another bait. Feel like a snapper. He 
be spitting up all these little bait fish that are out here. Most of them are, uh, there's a lot of thread fins and uh, um, greenbacks out in the middle of the channel and he just spit up a ton. But what I had to do was, they were hitting the cut bait pretty good but they were getting off pretty quick so I spent, sent down a smaller bait and immediately got, got hammered on it. So making little adjustments like that make a huge difference when it comes to figuring out what these fish are gonna eat. Cause I mean, like I said, as soon as he got to the bottom, as soon as that bait fish got to the bottom, he was on it. All I'm using today is a, uh, I'm using a one ounce huggy jig and 20 pound liter, 10 pound braid. And I'm doing a, and a, a, a perfection loop. So you make a loop, you go in with the tag end through the eye, you come through the back through the loop and then you wrap it around twice and then you go back through the loop and you're ready to go. And what I'm doing is I'm hooking that bait top down. Sometimes it matters, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes they won't eat it like that and sometimes it doesn't matter how you hook it, they'll eat it. So again, trying different things until you establish a pattern. No matter what type of fishing you're doing, you have to you have to establish some kind of pattern of how these fish are going to eat. And then once you do that, even if you're using artificials, if you're using oh that fast, if you're using uh, artificials, live bait, anything like that, if you know what they're doing, if you're concentrated on what the, how those fish are eating, and you figure out that pattern, like the other day, the tarpon wanted the bait the top water worked and then stopped as soon as it dead stopped they would come up and grab it so once we established that pattern we were able to jump a bunch of tarpon but it was just getting to figure out how they wanted that bait presented to them and it's the same thing with live bait same thing with cut bait same thing with everything that you do if it be bass fishing anything saltwater fishing you have to establish a pattern figure out what those fish want and once you figure it out you should be good to go Oh, come on, man. Don't know how he didn't stay hooked. That was a good fish. What I just noticed that, that there was a bait fish that was swimming on top of the surface and it was a glass minnow about this big and he was floundering because it looked like he had been hammered. And uh, so he, so I looked at that and he was about that big. So what I did is I started using bait that size. I've got bait that size. Sure enough, so get, get, getting down there, it's getting hit. That's called paying attention to what you're looking at out here, what you're seeing. You want to make sure that your surroundings are showing you different things. Some, I mean, it doesn't happen all the time that you see something like that. But um, if you see something like that, that definitely is telling you, or you see the bait fish that's getting hammered out here, that's the size of the bait fish that's getting hammered. So you want to pay attention to things like that. You want to, God bless America. You want to pay attention to things. Just little things like that are going to let you know what's going on out here, what these fish are keyed in on. You can see all the bait pods too when you're traveling along. You can see them on top of the surface and you can see them on your, on your depth finder. As I showed you earlier, what it looks like when it's a, um, when it's on the side imaging. So, you, always pay attention to your surroundings because it is going to help you become a better fisherman because it's going to let you know a couple of different things so always pay attention to that look around see what the birds are doing see if there's any bait in the, on the water or on the surface on the in the water just checking different things like that watching i'm always my head's on a swivel when i'm out here because i'm always looking at things i'm always trying to determine unless I'm slack slacker jigging fishing or freelining I have to watch that but other than that my head's on a swivel out here ooh look at that snapper oh yeah 
that's what I'm talking about. This time I upgraded my bait just a little bit just to see if I could get a bigger fish. Sure enough, I set him down there in a knocker rig. Bam, he was on it. I hate snap. I mean, I don't hate them. I just, I hate unhooking them because they can be so mean. A lot of you may not know this, but we carry egg sinkers. And for our pricing, you can't beat it anywhere. If you go to our website, you can check them out, tampabayfishingchannel.com, but we do sell egg weights from one up to, I think five ounce, but we do have six and eight ounce available. So if you are interested in six and eight ounce, we can do that. But we have one through five. And if you want something smaller, we have those molds also. We don't have them on the website, but you can let me know and we can get them ordered for you. But the knocker rig is one of my favorite. It's one that I've used for a long, long time. And as you just saw, it caught that nice snapper. One thing about using a knocker rig is if the bait's big enough, what will happen is when you're dropping it down, that bait will swim away from the weight. So when he swims away from the weight, what happens is, is he's way up in the water column. So when I get down to the bottom, I reel up until I catch up to the bait and then I drop it back down. And then once I'm down there, what I'll do is I'll slowly let out line just to get that bait away just enough from that sinker. Oh, did I lose it? Yep, lost it. So that bait will get away from the sinker like this. I need to cut my line, but um, so it gets away so that bait is a little bit more natural. So again, trying different things is what the key is. I was getting bites on the huggy jig. I switched over to see if I could get a little bit bigger fish on the knocker rig and I did. So always change it up unless you're really on a hot bite. If you have somebody with you, have one person using one thing and have the other person using another thing. Don't use the same thing until you establish that pattern. I can't say that enough. As I stated before, we do have a seminar that we, we have coming up on October 28th. It's a Thursday at uh, Southeastern Fishing Tackle in Tampa off of uh, Florida Avenue and uh, i will put up when i find out exact times i'll put that up but they're gonna have they're gonna have drinks they're gonna have food it's gonna be a good time it's gonna it's gonna be nice we're gonna do a seminar we're gonna talk about everything that we talk about on the show but we're gonna add some things to that so if you've been to a seminar before you still might want to come to this one because we're gonna do something a little added extra uh, I try to change things up as I as much as I possibly can and we're in the middle of some really exciting things with the channel um, So we've got a lot going on and we really appreciate all the support and before I get the, the question asked on YouTube and Facebook and things like that What app am I using to get the tides and salooners? Well, what we've done is we've just put a link to what we use for the tides and salooner periods on tampabayfishingchannel.com forward slash tides. If you go there, and I'll leave a link down below, you can get all that information right there and uh, it's, it's readily available. But like I said, the tide is gonna be ripping in the morning, so if you wanna fish for grouper and snapper, I would recommend doing it later in the afternoon. And so you can, what's nice about Tampa Bay is you can do all kinds of different things. like. I'm thinking about running up and, and doing some flats fishing, uh, but the tide is starting to slow down a little bit, so I might just stick it out for a little bit longer. I haven't hit the major or the minor yet, so we're, we'll see about that. But anyway, again, I just want to thank you for all of the support. It's been awesome. Fish more, catch more. See you on the flip side.